section seventy six of Up One Pair of Stairs of My Book House. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Crystal Treader. Up One Pair of Stairs of My Book House. Edited by Olive Beaupre Miller. Toads and Diamonds. Adapted from Peralt. Once upon a time a woodcutter found a little baby girl in the forest. At night he took her home to live with his wife and his own little daughter, who was a year or so older than the foster child. As the little one grew up, the mother and her own daughter were both so continually thinking of themselves, so continually wanting to be served with the best of everything, and do no work at all, that they made it hard indeed for any one to live with them. The younger girl, however, was good and sweet of temper, and one of the most beautiful creatures ever seen. No matter how hard the mother and older daughter made her work, nor how little they gave her in return, she was always kind, patient, and obedient. Among other things, it was her duty to go twice every day to draw water more than a mile and a half from the house, and bring home a pitcher full of it. One morning, as she stood by the fountain, there came to her a poor woman, who begged her for a drink. "'Oh, yes, I will give you a drink with all my heart.' "'Goody,' said the pretty child. Rinsing the pitcher at once, she took some of the clearest water from the fountain, and gave it to the stranger, holding up the pitcher all the while, that she might drink the more easily. Then the good woman said to her, You are so good and courteous, that I cannot help giving you a gift. For this was a fairy who had taken the form of a poor country woman in order to learn just how good and kind the young girl really was. I will give you a gift, continued the fairy, that at every word you speak there shall come out of your mouth either a flower or a jewel. When the pretty girl returned home, the mother began to scold her for staying so long at the fountain. I beg your pardon, mamma, she answered, but I could not make more haste. As she spoke these words, there came out of her mouth two roses, two pearls, and two large diamonds. What is this I see? cried the woman in great astonishment. Pearls and diamonds drop out of the girl's mouth? How happened this, my child? The girl told her the whole story, frankly, not without dropping great numbers of diamonds. Truly, cried the mother, I must send my own dear child thither. Fanny, look at what comes out of your sister's mouth when she speaks. Would you not be glad, dear, to have the same gift? You have only to go and draw water out of the fountain, and when the poor woman asks you for a drink, to give it to her very politely. I would like to see myself going to the fountain to draw water, said this proud, ill-natured creature, for she thought herself too fine to do work of that sort. I insist you shall go, said the mother, who was very fond of her own daughter and wanted her to have the best of everything. Go instantly. So the girl was obliged to do as she was bid, but she grumbled all the way, and she took with her the best silver tankard in the house, instead of the plainer one her sister was accustomed to use. No sooner had she reached the fountain than she saw coming out of the wood a magnificently dressed lady, who came to her and asked for a drink. This was the same fairy who had appeared to her sister but she had purposely taken upon herself another form, so the older girl should not know her. Never dreaming that this very fine lady was the same poor woman who had in her power the wonderful gift, the girl answered rudely, Oh, I suppose you think I came hither just to serve you with water. I suppose I carried this silver tankard all along the way through the forest purely to please your ladyship. If you want to drink, get it yourself. You are scarcely polite, answered the fairy, very calmly. Well, then, 
since you answer me in such a way i give for you a gift that at every word you speak there shall come out of your mouth either a toad or a snake the girl's mother had been watching eagerly for her return and as soon as she saw her coming through the woods she called out well my daughter well mother answered the girl but at the first word she spoke out of her mouth fell a toad and a snake oh mercy cried the mother what is this i see no jewels but toads and snakes yet so foolish was she in her fondness for her own child that she never dreamed of questioning whether the girl had been at fault for what had happened to her indeed she began at once to think who else could have been to blame i know she cried running toward the kitchen where her foster daughter was at work it is you who are to blame for this you who brought all this misery on your sister but you shall pay for it out of this house you go at once and forever then she drove the young girl out of the house and into the forest but as the pretty creature sat on a fallen log alone and weeping who should come by but a king's son seeing her so sad and beautiful he asked her what she did there alone alas sir she cried my mother has turned me out of doors the king's son who saw five or six pearls and as many diamonds drop out of her mouth as she spoke was astounded and desired her to tell him all that had happened perceiving as she told her story that she was as beautiful in heart as in face the king's son fell in love with her on the spot asking her leave he conducted her to the place of the king his father and there married her as for the sister snakes and toads kept falling from her mouth till she became so hateful to all that her own mother turned her out of doors she wandered off into the forest and was never heard of again end of section seventy six recording by crystal treader